It's another side that like wants to take more. It wants to go that one more round. Because like going that one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. You know what I mean? Welcome, everyone, to another episode of a One More Round, the Rocky Series podcast. I'm your host, Ryan, and with me today, of course, is Katie and Kyle. And before you guys say hello, i just like to say yes to those who are watching this on the YouTubes or any kind of video. I'm home, back in Canada. My deployment in Qatar is over. I'm at my home studio with my family and everything else. It's good to be back. Kyle, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm feeling at peace and ready to podcast. Wow. At peace. Okay. I'm at peace right now. Okay. And uh, Katie, how are you? Wonderful. I'm not, maybe not as zen as Kyle, but um, yeah, I'm great. And welcome home, Brian. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, Kyle, you're very zen. That's good to hear. And I would like to welcome anyone who's watching us on the live socials, uh, whether it's Twitter or Instagram. All right. So, well, we're in Rocky Four, Episode 2. We're back home. So we have the trivia. You ready? We have the trivia. Oh, oh, I, I kind of forgot. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Now, it's been so long that I was actually reading the questions for Rocky Three that I couldn't remember if we'd done these ones yet or not. So let me know. You ready? Oh, God. I don't remember either, to be honest with you. Did we ask these five questions? Where does Apollo take Rocky to train? Because I think we had a question about was it the city or the gym? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And who says I don't even have a gun? Do you remember answering those questions? Okay. Yeah. So we only had five more questions to answer for Rocky Three. So that's how close we were done. Almost. Oh, okay. Yeah. So are we just going to finish Rocky Three? Yeah. So Kyle, do you have the scorecard? Because I'm just pulling it up now. Okay. So we'll tally up at the end, of course, because Kyle for the rest of the show to get us the scorecard ready. So here's the last five questions for Rocky (laughs) Three. Here we go. True or false? Polly says, I don't sweat you to Apollo. <laughs> okay. Well, see, this is where my br- I overthink things because oh. I'm like, does he say it to Apollo? And we're talking in the context. I don't think this matters, but uh, the context of Rocky Three, because he definitely says it in Rocky Two. Okay. So, yeah, this is Rocky Three. Oh, shoot. Am I going to overthink this? Maybe. I don't know. Polly says, I don't sweat you to Apollo. True or false? Number 47, who says he can't train to this jungle junk music? <laughs> All uh, right. Okay. I don't know if we're supposed to even read I that. It was Adrian who said that. Just so you guys I think know. it was Adrian, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what does Apollo answer back after one of the broadcasters says, quote, you and Clubber exchange words. Any comment? I believe he says his own anger will destroy him from the inside. That's true. And anger leads to the He said something like side. that. Yeah. Yes. Number 49, who says, quote, nothing is real if you don't believe in who you are. And lastly. Wait. Oh, says, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. okay. I, <laughs> never mind. Go on. That was Polly. Another yeah, Polly said that. <laughs> I don't think Polly's ever believed in himself. And lastly, what is Mickey's last name? That completes our Rocky three questions, believe it or not. We do have bonus questions, but we're going to do the bonus questions because that comes with the uh, Rocco. How do you see his last name again, Kyle? Mouchettere. Thank you. This is from uh, Rocco's The Rocky Trivia Book. Please buy it on Amazon. Support Rocco and his family. And this is the... Hear that? That's the hardcover. Ooh. That's the hardcover version I bought. It comes with the extra photos. It's really cool. And it comes with bonus questions. So what we're going to do when we get to the actual end of Rocky 6 and we finish the Rocky 6 original questions, we'll have time. We'll do the bonus questions during that season for all six films because there's an additional... 10 questions for each film, I think. Something like that. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, Emails, Katie. Yes. We have one from Victor. Hello again. I wrote a few months back expressing my love for the podcast, and I'm still thoroughly enjoying it. While listening to the beginning of the Rocky Four series and hearing your discussion about how quintessentially 80s it is, I was reminded of a YouTube video I recently watched called What is the Most 80s Movie Ever? And then Mm -hmm. he links to the video. 
Looking forward to watching that. It's fantastic, comprehensive breakdown of 10 80s movies across various categories. Mm. Soundtrack, montage, style, political backdrop, etc. To determine which film embodies the essence of the 80s the most. That's a big undertaking. Just the subject alone to say, okay, which film, regardless, I guess Rocky Four is probably part of the 10 is my guess. I don't know if he says that in the email. Yes. It, it's so hard to judge that because it's everyone's interpretation of the 80s is going to be different. Well, true, but he says it's a, you have to categorize it. Like there has to be a set of criteria, which it sounds like they do. Oh, yeah. okay. A set of criteria, soundtrack, montage, style, political backdrop, etc. As you might have guessed, Rocky oh, Four yeah. clinches the title. Number one, most Whoa. 80s movie ever. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm guessing without looking at the list, Breakfast Club will be on there. Yeah. Possibly Back to the Future, but it's hard to say. But Back to the Future did have the soundtrack. You know, Huey Lewis was in that movie. No political stuff for either of those, though. That's true. Yeah, but I guarantee you Breakfast Club is in there. I don't know why that one came to me. That, that to me is quintessential 80s. Is yeah. Club. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So well, Thanks, I'm Vic. looking forward to checking that out. And so Victor says, of course, it's far from a scientific study, but it's, it's remarkably accurate. As a child of the 80s, it's just another reason to love the film, despite what Kyle thinks. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah i knew i'm gonna get hate for my, my <laughs> opinions on rocky four <laughs> he says keep up the excellent work and safe travels back to the great white north sincerely victor from new york thanks victor yeah i arrived back safe sound. let me say really quickly so i traveled back local time qatar i woke up at two in the morning three two or three 2.30 in the morning local time, but I went to bed like at 7, 7.30. So I almost got like seven hours sleep. So my sleep was legit, which is actually not really a great thing. I was almost too like rested. So I had a 14 hour flight from Qatar to Boston. I kind of wish I was more tired than I might've slept on the plane, but I was mm-hmm. so kind of like rested. I didn't really sleep. So when I landed local time, Boston, after a 14 hour flight, it was two in the afternoon in Boston. I got to the ticket counter and the uh, agent there was like, uh, you owe uh, three hundred dollars uh, for us to release the ticket to you, and I'm like, "What? I've been in the military twenty years, done numerous flights. I've never paid a dime in my life. I don't know why they're holding my ticket for three hundred bucks." Long story short, I had to call the the travel agency. You know, Keska say f. You know, what is going on here? And then they got it all figured out, but they had to recreate my file. My file's corrupted, and we were getting down to the wire for the uh, departure time. But then when I actually got through the security and everything got to my gate, they changed gates, but then the flight was delayed because of weather, so there was no rush after all. I got home 11 p.m. or 10.30 p.m. in Ottawa time, which is East Coast time, same time as Boston, but eight hours after I landed. It was a 30-hour travel day for me. Mm-hmm. By the time I woke up and landed, it was like 30 hours of being awake. And then when I tried to sleep that night, after you, you know, after you know what, after I tried to, <laughs> after I tried <laughs> to, that fall, didn't help you fall asleep. <laughs> you know what's funny? It, like even Becky was like, I thought you'd be too tired. I'm like, honey, <laughs> I just would have did that the next day. I'd be like, I'm too tired for this. I thought I was gonna be too tired sleep. too as well, but I just, I think we you just were wired. I was maybe. a little bit wired. I, I kissed her goodnight, and one thing led to another. Anyway, yeah. so the point is. But then I had, a, I had the hardest time falling asleep. Then I started stressing out. And I've had this yeah. happen before with jet lag because I've traveled. But this is like the worst jet lag I've ever had. I actually believed I was never going to fall asleep again. It got in my own head. It's oh, like, you know, wow. like when you get, you're so tired. I'm like, that's it. I'm dead. I'm never going to sleep again. <laughs> I've ruined my whole life. My whole you life. You're so sleeping. overtired. Yeah. This is like oh, when wow. they try and like torture someone or get information out of them. They do sleep deprivation yeah. because it messes with your, your brain so much. And it doesn't wow. make sense. Of course, I'm going to fall asleep. I had nothing to wake up for. I had nothing to stress out about. I have like a month off of work. It's fantastic rest. So thank you, Vic. I got home safe. <laughs> a little jet lag. It took a couple of days, but now I'm now I'm good. I'm sleeping like seven hours straight. Everything's good, and I'm I'm actually right back to normal here in Ottawa. So yeah, glad to hear it. Yeah. The next one is from Nick. Hey everyone, thanks again for your dedication to producing this show. The entire network has been a staple of my podcast listening for the past few years. Wow. Rocky Four was my introduction to the series, and I'd love to get a hold of the copy of The Ultimate Cut. It was sent. Okay, yes. Ryan mentioned that in the last episode. He says, I have a group of dedicated Rocky fans who would love to watch it with me. Can you please send it? Many thanks for all your effort you guys put in, and I look forward to more great episodes. Regards, Nick. 
Thanks, Nick. And I should have said this to Nick. So I sent him the link. So again, that offer still stands. If anyone's come to the shows lately, not late, but I mean, people join the podcast throughout the months and I'll never get rid of the link. So no matter when you're listening to this, if you give me an email, it's in the show notes, the show's email, I will provide you, of course, the link. It's on my shared cloud drive or whatever. So I'll just send out the link. But Nick, I should have said, don't give the link to anyone without telling them to listen to the podcast. I should have made that a criteria. So he's got, hey, I've got all these Rocky friends who want the link. That's cool. But you better tell them to listen to this podcast or else you can reach Okay, out. I have an idea. I have Almost an idea. Done. Maybe if we can somehow make the link password protected and then mm. in each podcast we give like a clue to what one of the letters is to the passwords you have to listen to several episodes before you can unlock there them. you go <laughs> yeah you get each one character of the password each episode yeah that's funny even though i'm not allowed to sell the link join my patreon just for a dollar there you go you <laughs> yeah get- that's a better way yeah just a dollar a month, month is all it is for a dollar a month you could feed a starving a starving podcaster, podcaster in ottawa <laughs> Thanks, uh, Nick. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I got one more email from uh, Paul. He just wants the link. He didn't say anything else. He says, hey, give me the link. But mm-hmm. Paul's given us, he's given us lots of, he also wished me safe travels home and uh, he's given us lots of emails. But yes, Paul, I sent you the link as well. Okay. Yeah. If you want the link, send me an email. Yeah. That's the other criteria. You got to tell us how great of a show we are, but you got to at least say that. So Katie has something to read. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, without any further ado, that's it. That's it for housekeeping. The emails are read. Trivia was asked. We'll give the answers at the end. I rewatched the director's cut. I'm, I'm going to be doing this throughout the season. So this is how I'm going to do it to kind of where we are, what we covered in the past last episode, because I didn't have it in Qatar and then where we're going to probably be today. It's, it's kind of hard to, it's harder than I thought it was going to be actually, because I don't know if you remember this guys and listeners, the beginning of Rocky for Rocky versus Drago, the movie starts. The, so the director's cut size cut starts with Rocky three, not just the montage of the fight, but it shows you Rocky losing against Clubber, Apollo training, not the whole montage, but joining forces with Sly as a friend. And then it goes into like the final half round of the Clubber fight with Rocky winning. And then it's like the sweetest victory by Journey or something plays over top of that fight. So the first like three to four minutes is a recap of the friendship and partnership of Apollo and rocky and it, but it doesn't even show the secret fight that's it it's nothing corny that's the thing there's nothing is corny nothing is cheesy so i remember this happening because what sly wanted to show us during this director's cut was again to reestablish the friendship between rocky mm-hmm. and apollo's characters mm-hmm. so you know how each film has the mon- montage for the previous film so what sly did here is he expanded that montage not of just the final round so to speak or a couple rounds of the fight he actually did a montage of the relationship that led to the victory over Clubber. Cool. And then you know what the next scene is? Do you remember what the next scene was after that? I don't Apollo? Know yeah, Apollo in the pool. That's it. So mm-hmm. talk about right away, like everything we covered last episode, nothing. And what we're going to cover today. So what, what was cut out, if you remember, Polly's birthday. You know, same friend. <laughs> all that stuff. All that goofy. The robot. So he just eliminated the whole birthday party. He was so keen sly on cutting out the robot that he cut out Polly's party period well i mean how would you sort of do it especially (laughs) because it was more jokey rocky right that's you're absolutely right it would takes away from the drama i remember watching that uh, cut for the first time it does feel more serious but i I actually just had forgotten until i watched it like today to prepare for this episode uh where where the cut is different from the original how much he actually cut out. The other part that he cuts out, though, is the scene we're going to cover next, is him giving the nobody, nobody prize. Nobody prize. He cuts oh, that, yeah. He cuts that out, too. <laughs> Kyle's clapping them both. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, you've clapped them both. So why don't you, because we're going to get into that open your prize scene, so maybe share your thoughts during that commentary. But why are you clapping the uh, same friend and the birthday party. Why are you cut? Why? Are you- uh, it's just cheesy. Like I don't. Rocky has never been like I guess the super serious guy, but he's kind of a goofball there, and the kid's annoying, 
and Polly's annoying, and it's just an annoying scene. And, and I'm not a big fan of the robot. I know I'm like shitting every on everything, and no fun, <laughs> no fun, Kyle. This episode, this se- this uh, season, you don't uh, like I, the jokey Polly either, like the silly no, Polly. I don't like the silly Polly. I actually really like Polly in Rocky Balboa. He's a good mix between dark Polly that we see in Rocky One and the silly Polly, which we see in Three and Four. Polly and Rocky 2 is actually pretty good, too. Yeah. 2 and Rocky Balboa are my favorite Pollys. Not a big fan of Polly in Rocky 4. Like, it's almost a distraction how silly he is. It, yeah. it epitomizes the 80s, though, and I think that's why yeah. people, like, cherish it. Yeah. It has that nostalgia factor, like the mm-hmm. 80s cheese. I'm also not really a, a child of the 80s either, right? Like, I was born in 84, so I wasn't there for, like, uh, 40%. It was more like 30-something percent of the 80s. I was in diapers and not not knowing how to talk for a good chunk of it. So really, the 90s is my real growing up generation, which 90s has its own cheese, but it's different than 80s stuff. So I don't relate as much to the 80s films. That totally makes sense. Yeah, that's fair. I'm definitely an 80s child. I think a lot of the listeners of the show are my age. Yeah, because you're roughly 10 years older than me, right? Yeah. So that's a whole, the, the that's 80s a to whole you is the generation. 90s to me. It's like 1980, I was five. I, like I saw Empire Strikes Back in the theaters, so that whole decade for me was just—I think I was a child in the best decade. I watched WrestleMania with Hogan and you know Simon Andre the Giant. I mean, I saw it all, man. Like all these things that people talk about on podcasts today, I lived through that as a kid. I really with, lucked out. With all due respect, with all due respect, I should not even podcast with this man <laughs> because he is a has been. That's true. <laughs> That was really good, Kyle. Very good. As long as you didn't call me a little man, I appreciate that. I think <laughs> yeah. this tiny little champion. Tiny little man. I actually have the uh, Rockies cut behind our recording here on my Apple TV, and it was actually that montage at the beginning, seven minutes long. Really? Seven. So he recapped Rocky three at the beginning of the. I forgot minutes. how long it was. Seven minutes long. I was very excited to hear that the director's cut was coming Mm -hmm. and I very much like it, but my disappointment came. I thought it was going to be longer. Like I thought we were going to get more. (laughs) I wanted more. And it was really wasn't. She said, boy, boy, she just keeps saying (laughs) You got to figure out how to say this. So we don't keep saying that's what she said. Um, More scenes. You thought it it would be meatier? (laughs) It was plenty meaty. (laughs) (laughs) No, I get what you're saying. It's actually an hour and 34 minutes long, which is actually longer than the original cut of Rocky. By like two minutes. But what's fascinating is actually how much he cut out, but it's still that length. I suppose. I guess I wanted more. Yeah. Again, that's what she said. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to go to the scene of Rocky and Adrian. Rocky giving the prize. And I have... A clip here of the deleted scene that I think we might get to and where it places in the director's cut. So kind of, I'm actually getting confused. So I apologize if I'm, if I'm not getting this 100% right between what was originally shown because I wanted to show the audience that there's a few deleted scenes that I wanted to show our listeners or have them listen to who maybe haven't seen the director's cut. I would assume there might be a few listeners who haven't seen the director's cut. But Really quickly, Ryan, um, yes. I did want to comment about using the montage of Rockies, especially Rocky Four. There's a lot of Rocky Four in the family Stallone. Sorry, thank you, Katie. I knew there was something else. Katie, you've seen the first couple of episodes. You said so. What are your uh, What are your thoughts on the season two so far? So far, so good. It's not mind blowing. It's fun though. I mean, it's cute. Like every episode, they have a planted activity, sure. a planted conversation that wouldn't naturally happen. But it's still fun to see, you know, Sly with like they're leaving California. So he's they're they're all saying goodbyes to their California people and trying to set Frank up with a woman. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I won't I won't spoil anything how that turned out, but uh any guesses if that relationship worked out or not? No, she's too old for him because you'll, you'll, she's actually younger than him. Yeah. But yeah, and the girls, you know. I don't know. I sometimes it's a bit much. Yeah. So they they go and take like a self defense class because the two older girls sure. moved to New York. See, this is the thing about reality shows, and I'll say this about this show: is you're right. They have to. There's activities that are planned for the show to elicit conversations, discussions, comedy, fun. They're not going to have the slides 
or the Stallones, I should say, just in their house for six months and the camera crews there and just eating supper and they go to my house is boring. But if you got me and Becky to go to a mini golf game, it'd be fun to film that and watch us interact. That's the whole idea is like put them in an activity so it's fun for us to watch and then discussions will come from that. I'll say this about season two. I finished it with Becky oh. this morning. It's our morning coffee routine was to watch the family Stallone. We went through like two episodes a day in the morning. It's really fun to watch it with her because, again, she knows, of course, Stallone through the movies a little bit. And she didn't know Jennifer or the daughters. But she's gotten to know the family through the two seasons of TV. And we've really grown to like them as a family. I've known a lot of Sly and stuff. But I'm trying to watch what's the genuine moments versus maybe whatever moments. And I find in season two much better than season one. And maybe they're just more comfortable in front of the cameras, too. I found that they were more natural this season. There was more of yeah, real kind of feelings. Sense. Yeah, but there's a great se- season finale of them in Rome, and both Becky and I were teary-eyed at the end of the episode, because I believe what they said about each other in this episode, without spoiling anything, what they said about each other was very genuine. Like, of course, the event was, I would say, it was planned, it's a planned event, but they're talking about how they're planning this event. Either they're incredible actors and they hate each other, or what they had to say about each other's family. It was really sweet, and it was nice. I've really grown to like the daughters. I think they're actually very well-adjusted interesting characters and jennifer now i don't mind saying this derek wayne johnson who i've interviewed many times on the show friend of mine in real life through you know you know we actually talked to each other offline to each other i asked him straight out i don't think i'm betraying any trust here i said what's jennifer like and he says she's the real deal what you see is what you get which i'm not surprised by so the sweet person that you see on this show that she is because she just seems like really sweet that's her she's as genuine as she comes and that's really cool to see and no, no wonder the daughters themselves are really well adjusted sweet individuals so yeah what are your thoughts yeah it that? seems genuine like I, that does come through which is uh, you know doesn't usually for i'm making assumptions about reality shows he did show us in the first episode he's like it's weird being followed around he's like there's like nine people here and he kind of shows all the camera people yeah. and he, i like the stories that the daughters give about growing up so that kind of helps make it more real With the stories, like, oh, when I was nine, this is what was happening. But one thing I did take note of that I thought was odd is when they're talking to the camera, there have been a few times now that the daughters will say, Sly did this instead of dad. They did it in the first season as well. I don't know what that is or why that might be. I don't know. That seemed odd. They never say that to him. Maybe the producers have asked them or maybe... Because Jennifer obviously says Sly and she doesn't say the daughter's dad. I think it's just a way of promoting the product of sly this is a very genuine season i think this is a very strong season i really enjoyed it again i watched it with becky and i know there's a lot of a lot of people oh so reality shows duh, duh, duh. i enjoyed it i think it's very sweet and innocent there's nothing crazy or dumb about it i actually quite enjoyed it i don't have to defend it i think people who are crapping on it probably haven't watched it i think if you watch it you'd have a hard time criticizing it i'd be curious to why you're criticizing it my criticisms are just the template that is reality television. That's, well, that's like, that's the nature of reality show. Yeah. Um, but you get to see a lot of Sly, and you get to see a lot of the daughters and their dynamic, and there's a lot of Frank in this. They really uh, doubled the Frank content in this they season. They did. There's, there's more coming. You'll see. Is so, it worthwhile? Like, is he good in the show? Like, is he a good draw? Yeah, I think so. And um, well, I don't know about draw. I mean, people aren't watching it because of Frank. Well, maybe like if he called oh, Frank, I think about Sly or something. There is no, some, like, some like if he's like moments. the Polly of this show or something. Yes. I don't watch it, so he is the Polly of the show, absolutely. And I don't want to give anything away for Kate because she is actually watching or any of our listeners. But there's some moments where the girls are like cringing about Frank, and it's hilarious to see their real life cringe about their uncle Frank. It's he's no. saying stuff like "You were probably conceived in this bed" or some weird shit. No, he did that in the first season. He talked about. Well, they had ads, like, even in the first episode, so this isn't a spoiler, but, you know, they're like, uh, coming up on this season of The Family Stallone, Mm -hmm. basically he's saying he wants to date women their age. It's really gross. I find that so disgusting. But He's 73 years old. Yeah, because it's like, obviously, you you wouldn't be dating them for anything other than sex. Well, and he even says, I don't know about date, but... Yeah. It's really skeezy. There's nothing more pathetic than like an old has-been guy trying to get, you have to edit this out, trying to get some young, you know what I mean? 
You're absolutely right. And Frank doesn't, he never disappoints. He never disappoints. I recommend this season. If you haven't, Paramount Plus, give it a watch. Dom and I on the Ramble Series podcast, if you're listening to that as well, we'll be talking about Frank's segments. We'll be discussing a couple of his moments on that reality show. I'll, I'll be bringing those up for sure. There's there's two or three legit moments where I think I want to show Dom because he doesn't watch it, but I'm going to show him the, the, some of the Frank moments. And one of them is him with his nieces yeah okay it's fun i liked it i got teary out at the end uh, i enjoyed watching it with becky and it went by too fast so I'm, I'm hoping they do a season three donald has this to say right away about the scene we're about to watch here he said here that there's no need to cut the scene less rocky and adrian is always bad good point that's fair yeah like, i'm not a huge fan of this scene but it's not a bad scene either i mean i can see where it's a little like if i'm he's like oh i don't love how certain parts of it were a little cheesy for lack of a better term but it seems like almost a little bit of like they're trying to repeat the bedroom scene in the third film it is a repeat of that the third film was simple do 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 and she goes da, do, da, bloop. <laughs> yeah, whatever. uh I've always loved this scene. I I do find their bedroom kind of small compared to, I think our master bedroom is almost the same size. We don't live in a mansion. So here comes Rocky coming out of the bathroom. Uh, what I love is somehow he got this cake and his robe and everything <laughs> in the bathroom when she's reading. How long has that cake been, been in where people take a crap? <laughs> and you find a way. But you get what I'm saying. Like We say yeah. that, but in the reality, if I try to hide a cake in my bathroom for my nighttime routine with Becky... I would have to make sure, okay, honey, the bathroom she uses to get ready for bed, she's already in bed. So how would I get the cake in the bathroom after my wife has used the bathroom to get ready for bed? Because Adrian's in bed reading, ready to go to sleep. Well, you can hide it in the shower. We have a glass, big glass shower. Well, you guys, you come on now. Okay? <laughs> you get what I'm saying. It's so hard to do. It's... Uh, Rocky. Yeah, you notice. What are you, you doing notice? with that cake? Well, uh. She goes, what are you doing with that cake? This almost seems like a scripted reality <laughs> show. It's like, I had no idea the cake was in there. That's not a natural response. I would have been like, how in the world did you get that cake in there without me noticing? Anyways, that's just me. Maybe this, I'm too hyper aware of what goes on in my house. The outfit, I don't know what you call that. Uh, it's like a boxing robe made into a jumpsuit. <laughs> yeah, it's a boxing, you're absolutely right, a boxing robe made into a jumpsuit to make it look like a formal wear almost. It's a, it's a I weird... mean, it's, but somehow I really like it. <laughs> Because did he have this tailor made for this event? Would he ever wear this again? Because he he's no. coming out like a major D. He's coming out like a major D. Mm -hmm. He's got the towel from the bathroom around his arm. He's That's where they clean up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Well, the party ain't over yet." You know, yeah, exactly. Because this is the same night of Polly <laughs> making mess on the robot with his whipped cream. Right? This cake isn't the only thing I'm gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right ryan i it is the same night the part that's why he says the party ain't Partying over yet yeah. that's right kyle the, the cake isn't the only thing that he's going to destroy today <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i love how katie's silently she i love well, i have no more to add katie's a little more mature she's way I more mean, mature than way more mature. <laughs> No. The fact that she's a female uh, automatically adds like whatever plus that is 30, true. Plus that 30 is... maturity points. <laughs> that is true. But you guys have to live through my drooling over the men. You drool you want because it makes me feel less immature when you drool. I'm still triggered by your objectification. <laughs> Party ain't over yet, you know. Still got to celebrate some more. It's a special night. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Uh, it's definitely Wednesday, but... Uh... In case you forgot, it's almost been nine years since you've been married to me, so here's your prize. Oh. So the anniversary is a week away, nine years. So again, Rocky timeline. What this year makes is it? 1985. Okay. Because they got married in 76. So what year did Rocky beat Clubber? Supposedly Sprung. 82. So he's been champion, like we mentioned before. So he's been the reigning champion for three years. All the other films are actually pretty good, except this one. And when I say pretty good, I mean, <laughs> if they jump ahead, then everything still makes sense. It's just you have to think you have to add three or something like that. Yeah. Like, all the points are consistent with each other. In this film, it's not at all. For example, Adrian will say to Apollo here, you've been retired nearly five years oh yeah i forgot about that statement mm -hmm. so what's the math on that they fought in 76 also in november 
five years would imply 1981. Oh, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. I'm tired. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this this film in particular is really sloppy on the timeline stuff. They sprinkle in things both ways because so the nine years is it is actually like the kids nine now. This movie came out nine years after the original Rocky film, so it's a nod to the first Rocky films. So all these things are accurate in that sense of like real world timeline but you're right about the five year comment and then you can just argue adrian was wrong with her math so maybe she meant to say nine years yeah too. that could be argued but they do sprinkle things in both ways to make it immediately after rocky three and also the five years comment would sort of make sense for that if she's estimating just rounding rounding numbers I um, roundings, you're almost wrong by a factor of two, right? Right. That's way, way off. It's not like it was actually six years and she said five. Five and nine is a big difference. They could have written in the script, you've been retired almost nine years. That actually helps the no, story. Here they're saying nine years. And in other cases, they make the 1982 work because it's supposed to be yeah. immediately after. So they say both ways to sort of. Yeah. It's a huge cluster that yep. you'll never be able to untie. Like there's just, mm-hmm. there's contradictions and you just have to accept them. I love you, Sly, of course. I just don't get why it was so hard just to do the math. Why not just speak to the to the degree or don't bring it up at all? Like he is the writer, director, editor. I just find it odd that there wasn't any kind of like, hey, we are now in the fourth film of this franchise. Maybe we should cut down a little bit of the time. Like, no timeline talk at all. It just seems very willy nilly in the seat of your pants. Like this is the first movie every time. Yeah, it is a little tricky though because more time has passed in real time than in movie time. For example, in Rocky Three, what I liked to what they did there, it's set in the early '80s when it was filmed. It's a three year difference. They say Rocky actually they screw up his age and stuff too. Yeah, never mind. They're still pretty bad. Yeah, it gets harder with each film. It does, yeah. it gets, and of course, Rocky Five it just goes crazy. Okay, all right. So we're gonna get into this uh, scene here, and I agree with Donald here that they should have mentioned something about the uh, callback to the first Rocky film. With it, to me, it's just Thursday. That would have been great for Adrian had she said said to yeah. me it's just Wednesday, and they could have chuckled about it, and all the Rocky fans would have been going nuts, like, oh, they did the callback with Rocky. Really good point. Just, but yeah, that would have been awesome. Adrian has like a way of saying stuff sarcastically at school. Like, for example, it's like, what does he eat? Oh, he eats little turtles. She could tell a joke. It had been nine years since that comment. She might have totally forgotten it. However, you don't um, forget things like that. That's true. She first All right. Date. So she goes, oh, but our anniversary is a week away. Again, Rocky's use of words. Yeah, it's prize instead of gift or present. Has anyone ever said, here's your no. prize? Rocky may be the only person in the history of the world who's ever given a birthday gift to an individual and said, open your prize. When would anyone in the right of mine ever say, open your prize regarding they, a birthday they gift? They don't. And that's what makes it so great. That's what makes it so great. That's what, that's what I love about Rocky. Of course. Is he says weird things. You know, like Apollo was making fun of him when they were fighting. He's like, yeah, mentally irregular, right? Rocky yeah. just has a, a way of saying things that's odd. And that's what makes his character lovable. Oh, I, I agree. And yeah. that's what we're here to digest or dissect. Sorry. And digest, I guess. But to dissect is the idea of how he says things differently. I'm just curious. This is where I would love to talk to Sly. It's these types of moments that I want to talk to Sly. You did write this, and then you acted this out. What is your thought process? Why does Rocky say it like this? What is his reasoning? Like, you as the writer created this character. What are you thinking when you write this prize? Like, when that comes to you as a writer, why did you choose to say open your prize? Unless he is... Sly himself has a different way of saying things. There should be a book written about the semantics of Rocky Balboa or something about all of the different. Well, Kyle's going to work on that after the timeline. That's his assignment. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can think of, this is my only connection. Tell me what you think of this between pride is that boxing is referred to as a prize fight. And he has the boxing ring here with the two characters boxing in the ring and the present was behind the ring so he says open your prize it's a prize fight it's the only yeah and good i'll give in this situation this is what your reward for being married to me for nine years your right. prize i'd like to point out that rocky's character on the cake is fighting right-handed <laughs> 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 and no adrian's trick. fighting southpaw 
<laughs> well, he doesn't want to have any tricks with his wife, right? No yeah, tricks. No tricks. No tricks. No tricks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mickey's in the corner there. Hey, 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 I want you to switch, Rocky. But that would be a trick. <laughs> that's, 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 that's true. That's true. You fade now, kid. <laughs> You had to tell you take it. Run right through her. <laughs> hey, that's that's pretty good impression, Ryan. Oh well, I try. Your Mickey's getting really good. See, you every time you say it, it makes me nervous when people say that because then I think, <laughs> oh, I gotta live up to it now. Hey, Ryan, your impression subpar. Thank you. I feel much better. Okay. <laughs> All right, so she's gonna open up her prize. What could it be, folks? What could it be? Anniversary's a week away. That's true, but uh, why wait? Has it been that rough? <laughs> <laughs> no. Here. I'd say it's it's been excellent. Really. Well, open your prize. Go go open your prize. Uh, I I love Adrian, and she looks lovely in this film too. I mean, she's a lovely woman all in all. But I'm just saying, she looks just as lovely in this film as well. It's only a few years after, of course, Rocky Three. But her voice sounds a little bit deeper. I don't know why that is. I just caught that when I'm listening to this. As women age, their voices seem to get a little oh, bit okay. deeper. I've noticed that. I don't know if that's it. Really would make thing. sense because you lose estrogen mm. as you age, so that. Does okay. kind of- just it sounds a little bit deeper. Like when she goes, I want the truth. You know, you hear that scene in your head and you go to this her, in the bed. The voice just seems a little bit more timber. I would like to point out her hair. Talia Shire has exceptional quality hair. Like, mm. It's a good quality thick. hair. Healthy and it's thick. nice hair. Italian. She's Italian. Yeah. Italian women have thick hair. You like it? It's beautiful. All right. <laughs> I was so nervous. I didn't know. I, I hope you like it. Why was he so nervous? He's nervous about the robot. He's very nervous about. He's really nervous about giving gifts. I'm always nervous giving stuff to my wife because she's very particular oh. about what she likes, and so I'm I have so- a very hard time getting her things that she likes. I find it extremely stressful to buy gifts for her. You got to do what I do. Give Just nothing. Don't. Yeah. I don't buy clothes because clothes is always tricky because you have to get sizes, you get the wrong size. You thought I was a medium. Ah, I'm like, I know, I don't know what you are. I don't know. Or whatever it is. Or for me, she buys me clothes all the time. Here's a hoodie. Here, you know, here's some jeans. Cool. Thanks. They fit. You, you know, know what we like? What do you like? Jewelry. Right. That might be a little bit. Yeah. I don't buy. Yeah. Much. My wife isn't really into jewelry, yeah. but as a woman and even if you've been married for a really long time, we still want to know that you're thinking of us. Oh, yeah. We... Part of gift giving is the not thought. just giving something yeah. value. It's it's the thought and effort. Well, it's like go for dinner. Yeah, like, like, especially if you put the effort into planning it and yeah. like making sure she has a nice time and stuff. So that's, that's your way of showing thought, and that works mm-hmm. for you guys. Nice you and I aren't big gift givers either, to be honest with you. Like we, we give pretty modest gifts. Yeah, yeah very modest. Uh, we want some effort to show that you we're still worth putting in time and effort you and are thought. you're worth it katie well that's how women yeah it's true no, it could be a single it. flower just randomly. i got her flowers when i was when i was a guitar i bought her a big bouquet of flowers yeah. for our, yeah, our see? anniversary i know it was uh, and i hate trust me i hate it like i saw the price tag on that i was like oh my gosh it's like they're dead in a week anyways i bought my wife flowers for valentine's day yeah and someone at work told me put a penny in the water Oh. And it makes them last a long time. And they're still looking good today. I've not really? heard the penny in the water thing. Uh, same. I thought it was bullshit, but I'm like, I'm going to try it. It's actually hard to find a penny because in Canada, they, they don't give oh, yeah. pennies anymore. Yeah. But like, I, I found one in the house somehow and it, yeah. it works really well. I put a $5 bill on mine and they still died. Didn't do <laughs> shit. <laughs> the guy I bought it from says, even if it looks like a snake, don't worry, because it won't bite you. It looks like it hurts, though. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. The edge of it digs into her skin. Oh, that's skin. what she said, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I do love how she wraps it around herself and she hugs herself with, oh, it's beautiful. It's very sweet, even though there's, there's probably a part of her is like, I'm never wearing this again after this uh, scene. Yeah, that looks annoying to wear. It does look annoying. It looks like it's irritating to feel. I don't think anyone likes that watch. I saw a couple of reactors. I've said before, I watched a few reactions of, of the series. And some of the gals that watched this actually thought it was cool. So I don't know. Maybe. It is. It, it actually is like the concept of it. It's just, I guess everybody has a different wrist, but where the edge of it ends up on her digs right. in. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, let's keep an eye out. She wears it. And see if she wears it at any time during this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Baz just wants to comment to you there, Katie. Stop making us normal guys look bad. Yeah, I, or, I think he's referring to Sly going all out always. Oh, maybe. Him. Baz, are you talking to Sly or Katie? <laughs> That's I, hey, I'm just trying to help y'all 
Oh, I'm doing fine. We, Don't worry. No, I Everything's know. Fine. I'm just saying you can really. Well, I'll expect you that. Yeah, that's true. Um, it takes very little to make us happy, and a lot of men don't do it. I oh, trust me, I have very little to give. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's amazing? That after all these years, everything still seems kind of new. Oh. You remember a long time ago, I told you that uh, I said that you ain't never getting rid of me. So there's a call back to an earlier film, so they still gave it to us. That was, of course, the Rocky II, right after the marriage when they made the coitus on the bed that Buckus was on. Remember that? We well, and I, you never get rid of me. Happy almost anniversary. I wish I could hire an editor. I've always wanted to make a Rocky fake trailer of him being a um, stalker in that scene. <laughs> yeah. When he goes, put the music, the ominous music in the back going, you're never getting rid of me. Like Rocky seemed like a stalker for Adrian. He's yelling out, Adrian. He's got like a freaking knife in his hand or something. I, I don't know. It'd be kind of, <laughs> it'd be kind of fun to do that. But Rocky has such a deep and like pure love for mm-hmm. Adrian. That no one would even entertain the idea of Rocky being unfaithful. Right. Let's face it. If he wanted to, he easily could. Oh, yeah. Women would throw themselves at him, not only for his look, but also like, Champion of the all world. the money and yeah. fame and stuff like that. It would be just as easy as getting a jug of milk from the grocery store. You know, like he could easily go out and cheat. You know, he never would. No. You see him even after Adrian passes away. He's there like every day. Rocky loves Adrian more than anyone could love anybody. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Now, Baz, to clarify, apparently, Kyle, you and I are making him look bad that we bought our wife's flowers. Oh, sorry, Baz. There you go. Come on, Baz. I mean, it's the simplest base level thing to do. It's not hard. That's what she said. Uh... Okay. (laughs) All right. Here we go. So you ain't never getting rid of me. Happy almost anniversary. Very sweet. We all love this relationship, of course. Okay, so then I... It's too bad they didn't keep that because that's a great editing of they yeah. Sly who cut it out because we got this great transition. Then this part here with the Sports Illustrated cover, Russians evade U.S. sports, Ivan Drago. It's not shown. Again, it cuts from the Rocky Three montage and the director's cut to Apollo in the pool. So we don't oh. even see this. Mm-hmm. Isn't that weird? I don't think we get them landing on the tarmac. And yeah, I kind of forgot it. about this bit. Yeah, this is interesting, them. though, because this plane looks like a TWA Okay. Which is, you would think the Russians would come in on like Aeroflot or with their own plane. Like this is an American plane landing. Mm, I, I bet they didn't and, count on people noticing that. And, and, well, in Rocky Five, he comes back on an Aeroflot plane. Oh, okay. Only losers would notice something like that. Oh, no, no. We no, just that's here. great. <laughs> you come with us with your boxing knowledge and your airplane knowledge. We appreciate it. So here's the headlines here. I love the smash and splash. Again, that sounds like Yvonne and, and uh, LaMilla's wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Can we talk about them as a couple for a second? Well, that's right. So he's the Soviet boxing champion, and she's the Olympic swim champion. So look at this power couple here. Both and of them look. And, yeah. They're probably both on steroids. Yeah, that's Because, like, for point. example, the uh, East German women's swim team are, like, really well known for being, like, roided up pretty big. That tracks. You know what Scandinavian countries, they should start selling us their water or something because what's with all of the most beautiful, like the epitome of the homo sapien species here? These well, two. Katie, a huge part of my genes is Scandinavian and look. So it's not all, it's not all so great specimens. You got just Kyle. <laughs> He's Swedish and she's Danish, but yeah, look at them. Very, they are very nice looking people, aren't they? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. If these two really hooked up in real life, they're kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wasn't there jealousy between Sly and Yvonne? Or not Yvonne, sorry, Dolph? Dolph. Probably. Uh, I don't th- I don't know regarding I heard that. I thought Sly didn't like him like talking to her or something like that. Well, that would totally make sense because they were newly together and he probably felt here's Dolph, like he could easily take my woman. Maybe. I, I I hadn't heard it. I mean, sure, they're humans. That feeling could be there of insecurity, even even with Sly. I mean, he's whatever. Yeah, I thought I heard it from you guys, so maybe I didn't. Oh. 
You know, Dolph was dating, I think, Grace Jones at the time, or very close to it. Yeah. Knowing Dolph, I don't think he would have even, if he knew the Sly was dating Bridget Nielsen. I don't think not Dolph was doing anything bad. No, I, I, I yeah, agree. He was just talking to her or something like that. But, Donald's saying she made Sly jealous by hitting on Dolph. Well, that sounds like more sense there. So, yeah. Bridget Nielsen, no, she's, she's a bit of a, yeah, she's a character. So, that she tried totally to make Sly sense. jealous by being old goofy around Dolph. That makes more sense than Sly admitting that he felt jealous by Dolph. Right? Hey, Katie, let me ask you. I've heard that's a bit of a thing women can do sometimes is they, they want to see if you get jealous over them. Certainly women probably do that. You're the representative of yeah. all women on you the represent earth. All female. like three and a half billion of them. Maybe like an age thing. I would I would say most like mature women that are like comfortable, like don't like that would be oh, silly. Maybe like, that's like a young girl. Type yeah. Thing. I mean, that's just like playing that's game playing that yeah. is unnecessary in a mature relationship. But we do like, for example, if, if I were Brigitte, she probably did do that, but it's nice to know that, that our man still feels a little jealous he still wants to make sure we yeah maybe not want... like weird possessive jealous yeah but like like a hint of jealousy yeah 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 just to show that the other person's important to you type of exactly. thing exactly yeah mm-hmm. okay Fair. if my partner if we're at a party and i'm talking to someone that they perceive as handsome or something then my partner might joke around later saying oh you really like so and so huh it's just like, oh, you noticed that, huh? Baz doesn't think Drago bought Ludmilla flowers. <laughs> so <laughs> probably not. In the Soviet Union, yeah. you have to go on nine-year wait list to get flowers. <laughs> that is probably true. But damn, these people, they are attractive. A great excitement there amongst Drago's landing on U.S. soil. They seem to be very excited by his presence. They're all asking, when are you going to fight? When are you going to fight? Are you going to be sanctioned by the U.S. boxing? The responses were just the same way to the conference, which is we're about to see the conference. I want to talk about that guy, though. Michael Pataki? Yeah. So he's not a Russian speaker. Mm -hmm. To someone who doesn't speak Russian, his accent's pretty good. He Agreed. Job, yeah, he does a great job. Yeah. Um, the Russian speaking guy I ran this guy by did not respect him at all. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> but it is interesting that they didn't choose someone who had like, actual abilities to speak Russian. Dolph, for example, doesn't say much. It's fine that he does not a Russian speaker. You know, he's there for more the way he looks and stuff. But this guy, I actually kind of like him anyways, though. He's like a real character. Yeah, I like him. He's great in this. Okay, well, maybe he's not a Russian speaker, but he does a good Russian accent. You know, 99% of people watching are going to be fine with, you know, like this movie probably wasn't marketed for a Russian speaking audience anyway. Mm -hmm. Why sacrifice a suckier actor who has like legitimate language skills when you can have this guy who's pretty entertaining? Well said, yeah. So this is where the director's cut starts after the seven minute recap of Rocky three is the pool scene. And not even with the dogs jump in the pool. I think it just literally starts with Apollo already in the pool. Like that cheesy commercial? We don't hear it. I don't know why this part always stresses me out. Dogs and pools with the hair and stuff. I don't know. They're long-haired dogs in your pool. The filters are running overtime. I don't know. Oh, really? That's yeah. so funny. It always <laughs> gets me. I love dogs. I'm a dog owner myself. And my dog... She's pretty short haired, so I don't know if I'd be that. But these are long haired dogs in his pool. Three of them, too, which I've always loved. So I guess the filters take care of the hair. Is that how they work? Like if you had a bunch of Italians in the pool, it'd be the same thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you said that, not me. You said that. They know. <laughs> That furniture, the patio furniture is so, I mean, it's probably supposed to be like the most luxurious that 1985 can have, but it's so bad. No cord on this TV. I love how the image of the TV, you can see how they, I don't know how they did the Photoshop back in the day in 85, but you can see how the images on this portable TV weren't really playing on this TV. They were superimpose in post-production yeah and plus like when you're watching this on vhs you don't notice though 
Mm-hmm. And there's also no power cord. There's nothing. No, it could be battery operated. Stop. It's 1985. There's no cable. There's no satellite dish that's connected to this TV. There's not any technology that existed in 85 <laughs> that I'm aware of where you could have a cordless, wireless, no power sourceless. There's a cord. It's just hidden in their like vegetation. Because no, it's yeah, it's in the back. Yeah, it yeah. goes directly to the vegetation. This is what they call, folks, a film flub. There's no yes. technology at this time. They're not even pretending to show a cord. Like They literally just put a TV on top of the patio stand. But, but over the years, I've noticed, mm-hmm. where's the cord? Where's the antenna? <laughs> where's the cable hookup? There is none. It seems like the dogs are too well-trained here, too. He's trying to entice that one dog to get into the pool. Those yeah. two other dogs are just there really nicely. They're um, not catching the ball. He's just chucking. He's basically yeah. hitting the dogs in the head with his tennis ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I get it. You have to have trained dogs there and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it just doesn't seem real to me, those dogs. What do you think he named those dogs? Oh. What would Apollo Creed name his dogs? Good question. Boy. I don't know. I had to think about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also want to say uh, Carl Weathers in this. I think he's 37-ish here, I think, if I remember correctly. But let me know if I'm wrong or somebody can Google that for me. Well, he's but... like a year younger than Sly. How old Sly is. Yeah, that's true. Which would have been like 40. Okay, so he's born 45. He's 40 here then or 39. 40. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Looks great, yeah. Today may have proved to be a landmark in sports history. After unraveling years of red tape, Russia will now throw its hat into the ring. The prize ring, that is. The introductions were made by his wife, Lamila Vobig Drago. Lamila Vobig Drago. I like uh, her middle name. I, I wonder if that would have been a good trivia question for Rocky IV. What trivia. was it? I sort of assumed wow. that was her wow. maiden name. The second name she used. Do I have to go back and show yeah, you? Yeah, you want? Yeah, you yeah. want? You wanted? No, no. You're gonna have to go back and watch uh, on your own. Okay. No. Yeah. You want to get that for the Rocky trivia that we might get? No, I just never caught that they stated a middle or maiden name. I'd be surprised how many people actually know her first yeah. name is Lamilla. A lot of people just call her Drago's wife, even to this day. I when find... I was a kid, I didn't know it. Yeah. Only as yeah. an adult. Well, to be fair to our watchers and listeners of this podcast, I don't know if Ludmilla is ever mentioned again. It's during the newscast that's mentioned, but I don't know if it's her name's ever said again in the film. In this film, yeah. Hmm. So you would only know it from the credits in the film, granted, yes, and then this part here in the newscast. Of course, Apollo's ears perk up right away when he hears the prize ring, the Russians. The newscaster also goes on to state Ludmilla's credentials. She was the double gold medalist in swimming. He was the double gold medalist in swimming. Today, the Soviet Union has officially entered professional boxing. My husband and great undefeated heavyweight world amateur champion, Captain Ivan Drago, has come here with his trainers to America to compete as an international sportsman and ambassador of goodwill. How's her accent, Kyle? It's like, it's okay. It's okay. I find it's okay. I don't know what it is. I know maybe I give her a passing grade because she's just so gorgeous to look at. I, I find she's that's okay i don't know i agree like yeah. she's not a bad actress like she's she, not she yeah. kills the role she kills yeah. this role like just the same way that dolph was made for rocky four in that sense both these actors huge break for them really rocky four just as much as it gave Dolph longer in his break it really helped bridget in her hollywood break i think both of them if both actors here had never been cast in rocky four in some alternate universe we would never say their names again in our lives they would just never have made it to hollywood on their own it's possible Dolph might have just because he has such a physique. Yeah, maybe. But boy, this helped him. Yeah, That's for cool. sure. He would have maintained as like more B smaller parts. Yeah, we wouldn't know his name as well. I agree with you. Ladies tend to love the military. Sure. Get up. Captain. He's a captain. here. He looks so good. This is a trick that the Soviets do. Oh, for sports. They're such scumbags, to be honest. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh boy. The Soviet Union would dominate the Olympics in a lot of amateur sports. Mm -hmm. The way they do it is, is they'd have these guys technically in the military, but they wouldn't have any military job. They just trained all year round. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In that sport. They basically train like a professional. They are a professional, essentially, but Mm -hmm. they're technically classed as an amateur because they're a military guy that does the sports on the side. Or the Soviet hockey team was the same way. They were all in the military, but they trained in hockey year round. And then they'd come and play these amateur teams because all the professional hockey players couldn't play in the Olympics, like the NHL Mm -hmm. players. 
And so they'd go against these amateur teams and then crush them, except for 1980 when the Americans mm-hmm. had that miracle on ice and beat the Soviets. Starting that's Kurt Russell. Such a, yeah. yeah. That's why it was such a miracle, right? Because you had this amateur team beat these like real pros. Yeah, so you're saying they're cheaters, <laughs> along with the oh, d- doping? Yeah. yeah, along with the doping, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The only rule is there are don't get caught, mm-hmm. essentially, as far as they're concerned. Well, no, like Popeye, they eat their spinach. Like Popeye. Yeah. Yeah. So Yvonne has arrived in America with his trainers. I do love how they have a black trainer with them. Is this guy from Russia? Because he's been with them the whole time. Yeah, I think there are a, a select few black guys in Russia, but they are quite rare. It must be. I don't know what the percentage is. But I have actually looked it up. It's like 0. 0.0 something percent. What it could be, too, is that the Soviet Union had relationships with several African countries. And there were several countries in Africa that were communist at this mm. time. And so it's possible that this guy immigrated to the Soviet Union at some point. He looks African. Yeah. He came with the crew. I yeah, like- no, I mean like his heritage. He looks... Okay. Yeah. We must I, find I, a guy who knows about sports. We must find black guy, yes? That's what I love is that even back then, the Russians, they had that diversity hires back then. Good for <laughs> Russia. They're very forward-thinking even back then. Oh, yeah. Certainly forward-thinking very- Russia. That's yeah. what they're known for. Has Drago ever boxed against a real professional? From having been trained in Russia by great boxing coach Manuel Vega. So there he is, Manuel Vega. He was trained in Russia by this guy. See, That's a very African sounding name. It's more like Spanish. Colonialization. Colonial story. Yeah. Spanish, you're right. Manuel yeah. Spanish, yeah. Check out that uh, guy next to him. Who's that good looking kid there? I've never seen him before. Look at yeah. him. What's his yeah. role? Ah. He's on the training team. He's yeah. somebody's nephew on the film crew that's like, okay, we got to put you in here. <laughs> he fills up the, the shots for Drago. He puts the steroids and the needles for him maybe could be that's a good uh, rocco trivia what's the name of his trainer because this russian guy is michael pataki he's not the trainer he's the spokesman so manuel's the mickey so this guy here is the mickey to drag away it's there. weird though there is another trainer there that you he see takes over fight. he kind of takes over yeah because why isn't he at the table here instead of there's nobody at the end right he, well, he was guys on the other side isn't he oh is he okay yeah uh, i think he, so but it says here that Manuel was the main trainer. I think the other guy was kind of like, you could say he was the poly of the training group or, he, or maybe the assistant trainer, but Manuel's the head trainer here. Their poly though is super serious. Like our poly is. Yeah, maybe the young kid there is the, he's the Russian poly. Yeah, mm-hmm. right Where's my comics? And now by Sergei Rimsky. Yeah. Oh, there, oh, there you go. There. Oh, yeah. so it was originally Manuel. We're really deep diving here. So Manuel was the original trainer. And then now this dude took over. I bet you when they look at the smug look on this other guy's face. Manuel is like the Rocky in Rocky Five. I got you here. And now somebody else has taken over. But he's still there, though. It's not like they left him back home. Yeah, yeah. I think they're just working together to train mm-hmm. Drago now. I think this guy here, I forget his name already. They went, he's speaking so fast. The other Russian trainer. So Manuel was the black trainer, this white Russian trainer. I think he's the dude that supplies the drugs. I think that's the key here. I think that's what we're getting here is that he was trained honest under Manuel. And then when this guy took over, that's when the drugs got introduced. And Drago's mm, career. Yeah, you could be he's right. A, that sounds plausible. Yeah, for I sure. Think. Yeah. Look at his face too. The way. Smug. Yeah. Yeah. He just looks like a scummy. He's got something up yeah. his sleeve. Like, ah. So when we see the um, steroids being put into Drago's arm later in the film, it's a white hand that does it too. Good call, Roy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. The still you have it. Dolph Lundgren, I mean, seriously, I think he is a perfect specimen of a human man. It's he's, ridiculous. I know. It's. It, tw- I think he's 27 in this film. Yeah. Not 27 or something. I mean, like the that. bone structure alone. I mean, ugh, god dang gorgeous. Hope? Well, I know he is, but I don't want to sound too confident. <laughs> if possible, we would like to have an exhibition bout with your famous champion, Rocky Balboa. What? There we go. I love a Paul's face right now. Hey, what about me? Why do you want to fight me? I love how already he's this. Now, the deleted scene I have, which we're going to do next episode, because we're going to finish this scene and then we'll end this episode, is actually a deleted scene. Tease here. It's a deleted scene between Rock and Apollo talking before the dinner table scene. And there's a lot of lore and reasons. And I don't know why they took it out of the film, because it really shows the reasons why Apollo wanted to fight. We think that Apollo wants to fight Drago because he wants to. The warrior may as well be dead, Stallion. There's a lot more to that, the reason why Apollo wants to fight Drago. There's a lot more than just him trying to prove that he's not an old, retired war tank. Yeah. <laughs> I still haven't seen the Rocky Oh, really? Okay. 
my guess would be sure what's he, your guess? he likes he also likes the attention so that's great so you're gonna watch these deleted scenes with us for the first time okay well All speaking right. of him liking the attention do you think he worked it in because he could be doing anything while he's watching this news conference but he's in the pool oh, of course you think sly wrote him in the pool or did he say <laughs> hey he, he okay the kitchen you need to... working on a sandwich in this yeah film. okay <laughs> obviously you couldn't do this in the film it would have been cool if they showed him on the couch, like depressed, gained a bunch of weight, and he's like eating his feelings, like he's eating like a bunch of Pringles, and there's like crumbs on him, and, and then he sees this, and it lights the fire in his head, and he starts like <laughs> training hard, he gets into good shape for this yeah. fight. <laughs> we had Fat Thor, you have Fat Apollo, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Fat Apollo would be awesome, if, especially if it was like a really bad fat suit, where it's like quite obvious. <laughs> <laughs> makes you think he can stand the pressure of fighting someone as seasoned as Balboa. There is no one who can match his strength, his endurance, or his aggressiveness. You make it sound like he's indestructible. Yes, he is. Well, Candace. Great deliveries. The guy, Michael, he does great deliveries. Of course, very well by Sly. Sly is the author of these lines. Keep that in mind. You make it sound like he's indestructible. Yes, he is. Of course, the next part, you know, whatever he hits, he destroys. I love those lines. Those are great lines. Mm -hmm. It's funny, like the personality difference between Ludmilla and him. She doesn't want to sound right. She almost reminds me of a Canadian. C Canadian culture, it kind of seen as like bad to talk yourself up too much it seems like more like american culture more it, it's more accepted to come across as more confident mm -hmm. like that and so she seems like that but then this guy here he's like the propagandist right where he's like yeah. i do not want to sound uh <laughs> that's his job yeah. <laughs> like i want <laughs> i want to no. talk some shit here he knows no. his audience like he knows who he's speaking to right no well, yeah well said donald brings up that apollo in the novelization which is always based on the script because the script will have things that aren't filmed but it's in the script he said in the novelization of the script uh apollo did have a training montage so that was never really filmed. Yeah. which is interesting because i know sly when he did the director's cut he fleshed out the fight sequence which we can't really show because this is the part where it gets too much but in that fight sequence against Drago, he actually shows, because it was filmed, that Apollo gave Drago much much more of a fight than shown on screen, that he really kind of was in fighting shape. He was good to go, but it was just still too a little too late compared to Drago's age and strength. I really like that. I really dislike how badly Apollo got beaten. Yeah. From just a boxing perspective alone, more of a fan of Apollo than I am of Rocky. Like, I really like Apollo as a boxer because I'm a fan of Muhammad Ali, who Apollo's based off of, right? Yeah. And so I really don't like the idea of him getting smacked around like that, even though Muhammad Ali fought in 1980, well past his prime, against Larry Holmes and got smacked around and embarrassed. This is a callback to this. Sylvester Stallone always borrows mm -hmm. from history. And I like That's a good it. Point. It's cool. Yeah. My kid brain rationalized it a little that. He tired himself out with that dance routine at the beginning. I'm going to respectfully disagree because it's, it's always the joke. I think that's almost a, I know that you're doing that. I mean, when I was a kid, always, I was like, no, why is he tiring okay. himself he's barely, out? He's actually I've barely heard people argue around. that for real, though. Yeah, it was too early in the fight. Like, he got, like, floored mm -hmm. because of Drago's power. It's not yeah, like yeah. power. Drago yeah. took him to, like, round 10 and Apollo ran out of gas. And you're like, okay, maybe you shouldn't. Deontay Wilder, you know who that is? He fought yep. Tyson Fury. They had a trilogy. They're really good fights. Yeah. And Deontay lost one of those fights. And I, I don't know if it was him or someone else blamed it on. Deontay Wilder had this big heavy thing on him for his like costume before he came out to the ring. And they're like, oh, if he wouldn't have carried that weight, then the fight would have gone differently. And I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. I don't think so. Hmm. Like, he got outboxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar. Okay, we'll end with this last part by the announcer here, and we get some of the nicknames that uh, Katie put on her chat today. Mm -hmm. So it goes, well, the Kenneth Mammoth Russian, who's already been nicknamed the Siberian Express, wreak havoc among the professional heavyweight ranks. Whoever he fights first, it'll be one hot ticket. Oh, and we'll be right back with a one hot ticket. Nope. Yeah. I, I, it's weird his reaction, and maybe this scene you're going to show will hit. He's like really upset. Yes. I know what he says, like, oh, the Russians are, are coming and they're taking all this hype. In reality, it's like I could see him kind of smirking in this and be like, hey, this is my chance. Because that's actually going to play next is him talking to Rocky. Because what they do in the director's cut, again, is they take out the whole phone call with the robot. So the next scene in the director's cut is just Rocky and 
of Apollo talking in uh, Rocky's backyard. So the whole, you know, I'm getting dizzy. So we're going to show that. And then we'll show the, we'll probably have enough time to show that sequence of the robot telephone sequence and then Sly and mm-hmm. Apollo in the backyard deleted sequence because Apollo yeah. is very patriotic. And I think that's what was focused on or kind of missed on. It had nothing to do with his eagle. At the end of the day, sure, he wants to fight again. The war may as well be dead and all that stuff. That's kind of what we see in the original cut. But in the second cut, we see more of it that he's very patriotic. That's why he did Living in America. That's why that song was done. It was, it was a propaganda for, uh, America to stop the Russian invasion. I want to save it for the deleted mm-hmm. discussion because it is addressed about Rocky and Drago and why Apollo steps up. Yeah, I think it's going to make for a fun discussion. But Apollo is more patriotic than we let on. I think that's part of what it is: is that he is very he's very pro-American, anti-Russian. He does not want to see these Russian sports people, you know, make a mockery as he sees it to the sport that he loves so much. And that's what it is. And it's he's patriotic. He's totally pro-American. You could almost argue that Rocky's more pro-Italian to some mm-hmm. degree. That's one big digression because he's supposed to be based off Muhammad Ali. Mm. That's one oh, big digression point. between yeah. Muhammad Ali and Apollo Creed. Mm-hmm. Is uh, Muhammad Ali had some, in my right. opinion, pretty legitimate beefs against the United States sure. government. Yeah, that's a great point. My silly point is that they can't make up their mind what Drago is called. Is he the Siberian Express or the Siberian Bull? Well, he gets renamed to Death from Above later from on. Above. Yes, it's true. Spoiler alert. Very good question. Maybe he's just both. He's got a lot of nicknames like Apollo. Well, this was a great discussion, great episode. But before we close, we have to give our answers here. And do you have your score sheet there, Kyle, regarding our answers? The reason why I asked, because remember, uh, Rocco gives us the judge's scorecard and where we fall into the judge's scorecard. You mean because it's the end of the... the That's right. We finished the third That's right. movie. So you get like mm. zero out of 50 correct or something. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So here we go. True or false? Oh, yeah. Oh, it says I don't sweat you. Yeah, of course that's true, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I almost put false, but I did put true. I was going back and forth because I couldn't remember if he says it to Apollo or someone else. He says it to well, he says it to Thunderlips and Apollo in that film. Yeah, Apollo throws his bag and Apollo's like, I don't sweat you. That's right. He also said that when Apollo in the press conference in the second part two. Who's this Al Capone? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's why I I couldn't remember him saying it to Apollo, but I did. I was like, "Mm, go with your gut. Of course, Polly is the one that says he can't train the jungle junk music. So what does Paul answer back to one of the broadcasters when he says you and Club exchange words? Any comment? I have no comment. Exactly. I need you to judge my answer. I put no comment. I don't want to be a dick, but it is exactly I have no comment. That's what I had to. Right. I have no comment. That's up to you guys. What do the judges say? Judges? Katie's pretty strict about this too. So it's I would have given it to him. Oh but, wow. Okay. Um, um I don't know. Well, you said no comment. That's half. Okay. How about the audience? uh, Chat people in the chat right now. Yeah. Do I get it for no comment, or should I not get it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first one to answer, whoever the first one to answer, will be the ruling. Okay. Uh, I'm going to remember this, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Second last one. Who says nothing is real if you don't believe in yourself? Obviously, Rocky. Finally, what is Mickey's last name? Gold Mill. So you want to tally up those scores? Oh, give it to him. Sorry, Donald. Sorry. Give it to him. Okay. Uh, so there you go. Give it to him. Fine. That's a call. Donald. Okay. Hold Donald, on. Let me just do a tally the scores here. Ryan. Yep. You got 39 points. Oof. Jeez. This, this is out of 50. Okay. Yeah. Katie, okay, so- you got 45 points. Whoa. That's an A. Okay. And then down. I got 42 points. <gasps> okay. Well, we'll do mine. So this is the judge's scorecard. So I got, oh boy. So I got Rocky wins by following his strategy and keeping Clubber at bay. Rocky wins by unanimous decision. So I still, you know, that's not bad. But you guys got the next level up. Rocky looks just like Creed and has now learned defense and movement. So Clubber gets KO'd in the second round. There you go. Is there a name for those different no, tiers or just, just like a- uh, numbers? Uh, the top one is perfect score, and that's Rocky wins by KO in the first round, but nobody got perfect scores. First. I wish Tim answered first. Tim agreed with me. <laughs> you shouldn't have said whoever answers first because now we could have had a tiebreaker. Yeah, that's true. Uh, too bad. Would you like to hear the score since we started? Sure. Yeah. We have overall, yeah. We have, have to come up with something. Okay, so Katie. Like a prize. Okay. <laughs> Ryan, you have Not 100, like a physical one. 119 points. Okay. I'm just behind you at 118. Oh, points. boy. 
But Katie, you actually have 125 points. Oh, Ooh. boy. There's no way we can catch up to her. There's no way. Yeah, there is. Just uh, uh, Why do you have so much more? I'm actually surprised I'm in second. I thought I <laughs> I really bombed this season because this season, I, Kyle, you've gained some ground. I bombed season three. Yeah, I was losing pretty bad earlier. I'm surprised I'm that close to you. I want listeners to throw out some ideas for what the winner gets. I still kind of agree with Tim here. He goes, Kyle is such a stickler and everything else, so he doesn't get a point. For that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, too bad, Tim. You were too slow. <laughs> hey, Rocco's in the chat. There you go. Thanks, oh, Rocco. Nice. Hey, Rocco, buddy. He so says, saying, good job, Katie. Good job, Katie. All right, Thanks, Rocco. Rocco. We, don't, we don't need a... She's already number one in everything. She's more much, She's smarter than us. She's no. more oh, than Ryan's us. so jealous. We still have three movies to go. That's true. I don't know. Rocky Five is where I'm going to shine. But I really, I legitimately think we should have something for each season winner and then the overall winner. That's true. I agree. Got to come up with something. I agree, with Donald. <laughs> I got to start handpicking the trivia. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. Those were said. There's handpicked. How many Rocky movies are there? <laughs> <laughs> well, then we would all get it. Like you wouldn't. I know. Game. I, I will let you answer. I'll give you oh. guys gag orders or something. All right. All right. Uh, this was fun. Thanks everyone for joining us live in the chat. We appreciate it. Uh, again, send appreciate us an email. It. Join my Patreon if you'd like to help support me financially. What that helps pay for is the Streamyard, the yearly subscription, which is not cheap. It also gives me, you know, a cup of coffee or something for my editing and everything like that. I appreciate the support there. But with that, this episode's over. I did not hear no bell. I just want